welcome to our lesson for today. We are going to look at the different types of hardware and software that you can be able to choose from whenever you have to buy a computer. Now in this topic we are focusing on systems technology and we are still looking at the introduction of computers. Now choosing specific hardware and software depends on the use of a computer. Now if you know what is it that you're going to be using your computer for, then this would make it easier for you to be able to choose the specific hardware and specific software. Now think of this, you are planning to buy a new PC, right? Now when you plan to buy this new PC, you had your old one but it has crashed. Now it crashed because of viruses that you got from downloading games. So this simply means that you are a gamer and you like downloading um, games from the internet. Now one thing that I can point out here is that it means maybe there wasn't proper security in terms of um, virus protection, for example an antivirus which is updated. Now it is very important that you are able to choose between all these different types of hardware carefully because you can get a lot of different hardware but you find that they don't really serve your purpose in terms of your computer use. Now there's different types of hardwares but obviously we know the basic ones that are really really important would be these three which is your RAM, your CPU as well as your hard drive. Now these are the three most important aspects in terms of understanding what it means to have a computer for an entry level user or a mid range user or even a powerful user. Now these types of computers would differ in terms of the size of the RAM, the hard drive as well as the CPU. Now we look at some points that you need to consider before you start choosing your computer. Now think of this. Before you even start to plan buying this computer, you need to ask yourself these questions. When and where you want to use this computer? Now, this simply means that you want to use it at home or do you want it to, uh, to be used while you're on the road? Secondly, your hardware specifications, like the size. How big do you want your hard drive to be? Will you be storing a lot of information or would we just using it just to store documents and do simple tasks like your assignments and research. Another one, the standard specifications for an entry level. Do you even know what is an entry level or do you want to you know, get more information about that? Do you know what is a more advanced user? So those are things that you need, really need to understand and ask yourself what is these uh, specifications that they're referring to. Then lastly, if an operating system is provided. Now whenever you buy um, a computer, you should have an operating system which comes with your computer. But obviously, you know, sometimes you buy, you wanna buy your second hand because you don't have enough money and you find that they don't come with a, uh, an operating system. But these are some of the basic things that you can ask yourself before you even start thinking of buying a computer. Right, now this is very important. Always buy the best product that your budget will allow. Now, if you can afford a 4,000 Rand computer, but you still think that, you know, the, the hard drive and size and the RAM, they're not the best, and you see that, you know what, there's another one that is 4.5, maybe I can try and go for that one. That's what we advise. Just rather go for what you will be able to uh, afford, but obviously know that it is the best product that you are buying. And then obviously, that I like I said before, the RAM, the size of storage, as well as the type of uh, your processor are very important. So you need to understand these three uh, basic um, hardware so that you can understand how they work together and how do they make your computer to be what it is. Right, then we're gonna look at some more uh, points to consider before you even start buying. Now gamers, or people who'd like to do video editing, photographers, architects, usually have a need for a large storage device. Simply means that their hard drive has to be big enough in order for them to store their data. Again, they would need a faster processor because remember they ga they're dealing with games where they will pay playing games, sometimes online games, so your processor needs to be able to process all of this um, at once. And now, 
another thing you need enough RAM now why do we say you need enough RAM now RAM assist in terms of allowing the easy access into all of this data now the more RAM you have it would obviously help your computer to perform a bit faster right and then besides knowing all of this hardware your software always matters now your software would depend on the hardware that you have which is what we call compa uh, compatibility now when you use software you obviously have to use software that is compatible to your hardware you cannot use software that is for um, Windows 7 on a Windows XP computer so that is a, that's why we have different versions for different types of hardware that has been developed right now which hardware to choose from you have a CPU and you need to think of the size of your CPU and how fast you want your computer to, for, uh, to perform then we also have your RAM now your RAM would obviously depend on your CPU if you have a bigger CPU it means you need more RAM because obviously you need your RAM to assist your processing um, uh, cycle and then your hard disk drive now your hard disk would obviously depend in terms of how much you want to store and then obviously if you have a lot of uh, storage it means you need a faster CPU that can process all of that data as well as the RAM that will assist in terms of accessing that data a DVD drive now if you have a DVD drive then you don't have to worry about your CD drive because obviously your DVD drive can allow both the CDs as well as the DVDs to be played your ports will you be having a lot of connections will you be allowing other people to connect onto your computer and and actually have more um, devices where you play multiple user games and share with other people so you obviously need to consider some of those uh, ports then your monitor and a printer now think of the type of a monitor that you want to have how big is the screen as well as do you want to print some of the information will you be printing will there be color or black and white printing and then obviously it will allow you to choose the type of printer that you want to um, to buy and then your mouse and keyboard do you want to buy an optical mouse do you want to use um, a wireless mouse or a wireless keyboard or an optical keyboard so those are some of the decisions you need to make and then lastly do you want to have some external storage device because maybe your hard drive would not be big enough or do you want to even make some backups because your external storage devices would allow you to make backup of your data now these are some of a few points that you can think of but obviously we still need to explore more of this right now we're gonna go to uh, software now think of all of this hardware that you had to choose from it's a lot and if you really don't understand what each hardware does it would really be confusing and when you get to a shop whenever there's a sale you'd obviously be the first person to jump into buying those devices but without knowing what is it that they would provide now software is also almost similar now there's different types of software now the first software that you need to choose from is obviously your operating system now what does this operating system do it actually controls and coordinates your hardware now without software it means you won't be able to control and coordinate your hardware now it is very important and it's obvious that all computers would have an operating system right the second type of software you need to choose from is application software now application software would obviously mean that it's allowing you to perform specific tasks now if you had a computer and you did not have application software it would simply mean that you can't use a computer in order to, perfor uh, to perform some of these tasks now these tasks that we're referring to is for example like typing a word document or even playing a game now these are some of the things that would obviously you want to buy a computer for so without the application means you are not really achieving what is it that you want to do with your computer 
Right. Now, these examples of uh, some operating systems, you obviously know some of them. You have your Windows XP, you can have your Windows 7 or 8, you have Linux, and you obviously have your uh, Mac operating system. Now, these are some of the examples of your application software. Your application software would obviously have a lot of um, examples because it, dif it differs according to, obviously, the user. So, with different users, you would need to get different applications because you want to perform your own specific task. Now, there's a few examples that you can choose from. You get your office suit. You get some accounting systems. You get payroll systems. You get communication hard, uh, software. And you get some multimedia software. So there's a lot of other software that you can choose from. But basically, it depends on are you working at a specific firm where you do accounting? So it obviously means that you would need the accounting system software. So all of these would obviously, like I said, depend on what are you using your computer for. Then, now, lastly, that we, we, what we're going to look at is why do we need to choose specific software? Now, it says here, software has compatibility issues, which means that applications are created for specific operating system. Now, whenever software is created, specifically your application software, it is created because of a specific operating system. Now, when they made Windows XP, there were specific applications or application softwares that were meant for Windows XP. Now, in nowadays, now you're using maybe Windows 8, Windows 7, and you still want to use some of the application software that you use from your Windows XP. So sometimes it would be a problem because of the compatibility of the software. Now, think of this. There are different types of um, software. Now, when you look at these types of software, they are classified in terms of versions, patches, as well as service packs. Now, this means that after software development, you get sometimes problems as well as errors. Now, because of these problems and errors, it forces developers to fix these problems. Now, for them to fix these problems, it means they need to create new software in order to update these problems and fix these problems. So that is why we get this updated software in terms of service packs, patches, as well as new versions of software. All right, does it make sense? I hope so. But let's explore a few now of this. They say it's important to update your software to get new versions. Now, by updating your software, it means that you get an updated version of the software where the problems that you had before or errors that you have before would have been fixed. Now, one might choose some um, online applications. Now, when you use online applications, it simply means that you don't have to worry about upgrading or updating the software, and you don't have to worry about installation because basically the software that you get online would obviously be updated, and you can just use it by just um, downloading uh, the software and using it on your computer. All right, then they say here there's no purchase and it allows collaboration. So you don't have to pay for these um, um, online applications because you simply subscribe to um, a company that offers this application and you download this application and you also have that opportunity to collaborate with other users where you can share this information online. All right, and that is it with... Um, our hardware and software for today, and thank you for joining us. Bye.